all students? Yes, sir. That's all like in college or something. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Cameron Keith and I am a senior at Frederick Douglass High School. <laughs> I've participated in the IB program and taken numerous advanced placement courses over my four year tenure. I am the captain of our varsity basketball team and have been able to maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.92. I <laughs> thank you. I enjoy giving assistance to my classmates and teammates whenever needed. I am a nominee of Scholar of the Week, and my long-term goal is to become a successful electrical engineer like my mother. I am a proud senior of Frederick Douglass High School, and I am ready for college. Now I want to welcome you to the October 24, 2017 Prince George's County Board of Education meeting. My name is Morgan Eugene, and I am a senior at Frederick Douglass High School. I'm currently enrolled in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, and even with the rigor of the program, I have been able to maintain a GPA of 3.75. While, <laughs> while also being an active member of the varsity volleyball team, swimming team, and tennis team. In college, I intend to double major in business management and industrial and organizational psychology. Highlights at this, at this evening's Board of Education meeting will include the news break, our new 3D. Patient Day and American Education Week. Please continue to check www.pgcps.org for upcoming Board of Education meetings and events. And now, the October 24th, Thank you, colleagues. Good evening and welcome to the October 24, 2017 board meeting of the Prince George's County Board of Education. How about Ms. Morgan Eugene and Mr. Cameron Keith from Frederick Douglass High School? Frederick Douglass High School has so many talented students, we couldn't bring you just one. Thank you so much, Frederick Douglass, and thank you, you wonderful young people, for the tremendous work that you do uh, and for representing Prince George's County Public Schools with grace and with dignity. Before we begin, folks, I'd like to ask everyone, as always, to turn off your wireless communication devices as they interfere with the taping of the meeting, and ask Ms. Boston to please lead us in the board prayer and pledge of allegiance. Please rise. Oh God, we pray to administer that which is just in all educational policies, being ever mindful of your guidance. Steer us to action with love, wisdom, and understanding. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Boston. Mrs. Wilson, would you please call the roll? Certainly, sir. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Ms. Ahmed. Here. Ms. Boston. Present. Mr. Burroughs. Present. Ms. Eubanks. Ms. Hernandez. Present. Mr. Murray. Present. Ms. Page. Present. Ms. Quinteros Grady. Present. Ms. Roach. Present. Mr. Valentine. Present. Mr. Wallace. Present. Ms. Williams. Here. Dr. Wiseman. Here. Dr. Eubanks. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, please uh, send your thoughts out to uh, Ms. Patricia Eubanks, who lost a very dear friend today. Our thoughts go out with her. She could not be with us this evening. Uh, colleagues, uh, may I have a motion to adopt the October 24, 2017 board meeting agenda? Thank you. It has been moved. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded to adopt the agenda. 
All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Colleagues, may I please have a motion to approve the October 12, 2017 board work session minutes. Thank you, it has been moved. Is there a second? second. It has been moved and seconded to adopt the October 12 board work session minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Uh, we will now have a news break entitled our new 3D scholars program. <clears throat> the Library and Media Center at C.H. Flowers High School in Springdale was the perfect setting for the kickoff of a groundbreaking program. Eighteen scholars from Prince George's County Public Schools gathered to embark on a truly unique journey. There's some really important, significant work that's going on in Prince George's County Public Schools. And it's taking direct aim at the rising cost of post-secondary education. Simply put, Prince George's County Public Schools has entered into a partnership unlike any other in the D.C. metropolitan area. So what's really exciting about this is that we are creating a pathway now for 21st century learning to occur. It's called the 3D Scholars Program, and here's how it works. Selected Prince George's County Public School students attend Prince George's County Community College in a dual enrollment status, getting a jump start on their associate's degree. Fields of study include business administration, criminal justice, or computer networks and cybersecurity. Once students complete their associate's degree, they move on to University Maryland University College to earn their bachelor's degree. Three institutions, three degrees. Hence the phrase, 3D scholars. And all for as little as $10,000 total. $10,000? Yes. yes. Total? Total. For the total? degree, total. No more. No more than more cent. <laughs> Get up. It's, that's what it is. And our hope is that then a student will strive to do it without a loan. No more than $10,000 total. That's almost unheard of in these days and our times in higher education. Yet it's the kind of innovative thinking necessary. According to U.S. News & World Report, since 1986, the cost of higher education has more than doubled when adjusted for inflation. So the powers that be in Prince George's County Public Education are taking a proactive approach. But when you step outside of Prince George's County and you go to other states and you go to national conferences and state conferences, people are in awe of the work that we're doing. And come out of school with no debt <laughs> hanging over your head. Well, I've always been a 4.0 student. Like, I've, I had the highest GPA in my class at Prince High School. But you have to be on top of your time management. You have to be organized. And you have to be determined to get it done. Talking to these kids this morning, just before the program started, you hear the schools they go to, the interests they have, the hopes and dreams and aspirations that they hold for themselves and, and that we hold for them. The first student that spoke after that said, thank you. That's what resonates. Our kids appreciate the opportunities and the programs we have a groundbreaking symbiotic process involving scholars, parents, and institutions of higher learning. Discover Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you, colleagues. 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 Yes. Colleagues. Yes. $10,000 total? $10,000 total. Are we offering our young scholars a bachelor's degree for $10,000 total? That's innovation. That's what it's about to provide opportunity and access in our school system. And what a great uh, program that, uh, that I believe is going to truly be a model for higher education across the state of Maryland and across the nation. And it's starting right here in Prince George's County. What a great, uh, great, great program and great scholars who will be part of it. We we'll now move colleagues to the chair's report. I will begin my remarks tonight, as I always do, honoring the memory of lives well-lived and well-loved. 
I know that there are more uh, than the four that are on my list here tonight. Uh, so I honor both the four that I will mention here and all of the friends and family that we remember. First, Ms. Kayla Holman, beloved student at G. James Golson Middle School. Ms. Sophonia Owens, beloved educator at Gwen Park Middle School. Ms. Shelley Miley, beloved father of Dr. Kara Libby, executive director of teaching and learning for PGCPS. And Ms. Shantice Murphy, beloved daughter of Mrs. Kim Murphy, Sasser Building Services staff. Colleagues, please join me in a moment of silence in honor of these phenomenal souls who will be missed but not forgotten. Please keep them and their families in your thoughts. Thank you, friends and colleagues. Let's move on and talk about the great things happening all across Prince George's County Public Schools. Congratulations are absolutely in order to Fairmont Heights High School community. On Friday, October 13, 2017, their new 193,000 square foot state of the art educational facility was dedicated. It was a spectacular gala celebrating this momentous occasion follow, following uh, the ribbon cutting at Fairmont Heights High School where students and uh, alumni from as far back as the 1940s and 50s uh, danced the night away in celebration. Congratulations uh, and what a, a historic monument uh, when I learned that Fairmont Heights was one of the first, if not the first, segregated high school in Prince George's County. It speaks to the history and how far we've come uh, and how much we honor our past. So uh, congratulations again to the Fairmont Heights community. Uh, and on Monday, October 16th, I, along with Vice Chair Boston and Board Member Grady, joined U.S. Senators Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen, along with Dr. Maxwell and many members of his team at Greenbelt Middle School for the a uh, much anticipated announcement of a $25 million U.S. Department of Education grant awarded to our school system entitled Great Teachers, Great Leaders, Great Schools. That's right, we got $25 million from the federal government. That absolutely deserves a round of applause. As, Dr. as, as Ben Carton said in his, in his presentation, these grants are competitive, they ain't easy to get. And the fact that we earned it with our hard work and our reputation here at Prince George's County uh, uh, says volumes uh, about what we are attempting to do each and every day uh, and, and the work we will put in. This grant uh, will help to improve teacher hiring, placement, support, and retention in our highest need schools and help us to develop and support the kind of leaders who will help our schools to thrive and our children to succeed. So we uh, really just applaud the efforts and partnerships with the, our federal law, lawmakers and look forward to seeing the results of this tremendous work. Um, uh, I want to uh, share my speaking time. I usually share it with one or two colleagues. I think I have four colleagues on my list who I'm going to share a bit of time uh, with, and um, I think we'll do it in this order. I know that Mr. Burroughs has someone that he wants to extend a recognition to, and then both uh, Ms. Williams and Mr. K. Alexander Wallace have some special people in the audience that they are going to acknowledge, and we're gonna take pictures. And then there's some very exciting work going on with our male educator uh, network and convening that I wanna talk about. So let's start with Mr. Burroughs. I'll be brief. I wanted to recognize uh, former school board chair, uh, vice chair, and member Owen Johnson, who's in the audience. Is Owen in the audience? Um, OJ. Where's OJ? I didn't see OJ. <laughs> OJ. <laughs> uh, 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 Mr. Johnson was my seatmate for many years, nice. about 10 years ago. Nice. Um, and so nice. glad to see you here tonight, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Burroughs, and welcome. Mr. Johnson, thank you for your outstanding service. 
Um, let's go, Kay Alexander, we'll start with you. Now we're gonna do a couple of recognitions and then we'll have a picture. We'll do both of the recognitions first and then have folks come up at one time for the picture. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening, colleagues, administration, and everyone in the audience. Um, I am always proud of the great work that our students do in our school system, uh, but I am even more proud of the work of the students in District 7. Uh, last year, this board recognized a couple of uh, students at Barack Obama Elementary School for their hard work and their dedication to community service and advocating for homeless youth that are their peers. Uh, in less than a few months, District 7 students amazed me again. And tonight, I want to honor one student at North Forza Elementary School, Mr. Shea Morton. There's the Shea. Can you wave to Shea? For, for those who did not catch the many uh, articles and news coverage of what Ms. Morton has done, for her birthday, um, instead of being like me and a couple of you know, my peers, and using the money for our own selfish means, she decided to give back to not only her community, but to her nation in raising, her goal was to raise 500 cases of water for the victims of the hurricanes in, um, in Puerto Rico. Um, 500 was a, a lofty goal, but she exceeded that by 2,500 more cases of water. And, and for her to only be 12 years old um, is, a, is a bright example of uh, the promise that this school system makes to our community. And I am hopeful that one day she'll go off to college and, and sit in the seat that I'm in as one of my constituents, because she is a servant leader. And if, Mr. Chair, if, you, um, if it would please you, I would like to read the proclamation that uh, I have designed for her. It would please me tremendously, oh, thank Mr. You. Wallace. Uh, presented to Mr. Shea Morton, sixth grade student at North Forsville Elementary School, in recognition of your, hum your humility, generosity, leadership, and commitment to selfless service you have demonstrated in helping those in Puerto Rico affected by Hurricane Maria and Irma, presented on this 24th day of October 2017, District 7 Representative K. Alexander Wallace and the Prince George's County Board of Education. Thank you again, Ms. Morton, for your leadership. Thank you. We, thank you. We'll shortly get an opportunity to, to, to get a photo app uh, and to just to demonstrate that we have both outstanding young people and outstanding adults in Prince George's County Public Schools. I will turn the mic over to Ms. Sonia Williams. Thank you, Chair. And I'd like to continue along the same lines that you started by saying that greatness is happening all over Prince George's County Public Schools. A few years ago, there was a law passed to um, implement green cleaning throughout our system, throughout the state. And Prince George's County Public Schools is the first organization in the state to complete this green cleaning certification. We have 10 custodians who completed this uh, program called the Cleaning Management Institute Basic uh, Custodial Certification Course. And this falls directly in line with two of the five of our pillars in the strategic plan, high performing workplace and safe and supportive environment. So I wanna just congratulate the 10 custodians that are in our system that completed this, this program. And thank you so much for your service every day for making our environment safe and clean for our students. Stand up, stand please, stand and be recognized in the back. Let's have all the honorees come on up, the young folks and, 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 and our young custodians. And of course, the principal of North Forestville. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we're, I'm just having to come up. We'll do it we'll separately, separately or together. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. But j j just before we uh, get started, Ms. Quinteros Brady, Ms. Quinteros Grady, could you please say Puerto Rico for us? Puerto Rico. Thank, Thank you. Know. you. That's just that's just that's just the way Mr. Wallace said it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, my friends, uh, uh, we'll move on. I think that um, uh, folks who know 
uh, of the service of, of Curtis Valentine know well about his commitment to male educators and male educators of, of color in particular. Uh, but what some folks may not know as much about is that there, has, there is indeed uh, a national movement uh, to diversify the teaching workforce and to get more males and more males of color into, into schools across this nation. Um, and, uh, and in that regard, there was an inaugural National Black Male Educators convening in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on October 14th uh, to bring awareness to the increasing number, uh, to what it takes to have an increasing number of black male educators join our nation's teaching corps. I think some people may be aware that uh, just about 2% of all teachers across the nation are men of color. Uh, and when you look at the, 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 the demographics of our student population, you'll know um, that that's a, a huge gap. Uh, and so uh, uh, Curtis led a contingency from here in Prince George's County, and we have a wonderful video to share with you in regard to that. The Mill Educator Network began here in Prince George's County over four years ago. But the idea for the Mill Educator Network, for me, began here at Oxon Hill Middle School when I served as an eighth grade language arts teacher. I became a teacher in Prince George's County because this is the county that raised me. There is something about a man being inside of a building, several men being inside of a building, being able to help lead young people. If it weren't for some of the male teachers, uh, that I had growing up in the Prince George County Public Schools. I would not be sitting in the chair in which I sit today. As an at-large member of the Prince George's County Board of Education, I met with and worked with other male educators in our system to create the Male Educator Network. When Curtis Valentine came in and, and brought up the idea, I mean, why not? The biggest reason is to, you know, unite brothers of the same mission, the same mind, the same passion, the same purpose um, to ultimately you know, try to produce some degree of charge, a positive charge inside of our county to ignite males, right? To ignite males because our young people need it. You know, um, males making up half of Prince George's County students is very important that they are able to see um, and interact with men on a consistent basis, especially those young kings who struggle the most. Young kings and queens, actually, right? It's so important for, um, for young people to see um, positive and powerful men um, each and every day. As it relates to student achievement, all of our students need to see diversity in the classrooms and so it, it's no shade to any of the fantastic uh, women educators that are out there. I had some phenomenal uh, women teachers in, in my life who helped make me who I am today. We definitely need to see more African American male teachers in the classroom to afford students an opportunity to be even more successful. It's our responsibility, right? It's our responsibility to unite um, men to try to retain, recruit quality male educators. There's nothing more important than that, and that's, that's our work. I believe strongly that uh, the men of PGCPS will have a very positive uh, influence on the outcomes for children in our school district. We've already seen in the last four years the numbers of students, the percentages of students needing remediation at the community college, for example, uh, in our county has dropped by 20%. And I think, you know, it's those kind of indicators that are independently validated uh, that really confirm the great work that we're doing in our county. And I think young men, young, the young men uh, who are part of uh, the men of PGCPS are making a very big difference. We've been able to create trainings for our male educators and interviewing and how to interview for the next job using male-to-male -male supports. I'm glad that we put together workshops on how to build with community partners, having a speed dating night, bringing in community partners to support other male educators. Here in Prince George's County, we made history by each year honoring over 200 male educators with our Male Educator Network Awards Ceremony. We understand the impact of that awards ceremony, motivating educators to get more involved in their schools and their community, challenging other educators to step their game up and become better educators. I'm excited about the next chapter of Male Educator Network here in Prince George's County. I'm looking forward to being able to match incoming male educators with experienced male educators to mentor them. We are excited about Prince George's County. We're excited about the Male Educator Network and we look forward to great things to come.
All right, we, of course, are so proud of you, Mr. Valentine, for your leadership. Uh, we all know who love education that great teachers come with in every gender and every race uh, and every creed, but knowing and understanding what it means to have a diverse teacher workforce uh, that represents the, the richness of our society uh, and the vast experiences that this richness brings knows that this uh, only helps to, to our students to grow and to learn and to achieve. So thank you uh, for that wonderful work. Uh, and we'll move on now to just a couple of upcoming announcements. Um, on October 25th, which is tomorrow, 6.30 at Largo High School, the Kerwin Commission will have a public hearing uh, and all are encouraged to attend and speak for equity and funding for our school system. This Kerwin Commission is a statewide commission. It's looking at how um, districts and the state fund education and how we ensure that there is uh, equitable distribution of those resources to students most in need. Uh, so your voice is needed and heard. We encourage you to participate. Uh, both uh, Dr. Maxwell and I will uh, be um, testifying along with many of our other citizens. Uh, November 9th, 2017 at 1 p.m. is a board meeting. December 7th, 2017 at 5 p.m. we have a capital improvement program meeting. And January 4th, 2018 at 5 p.m. will be our next board work session. All meetings of the board will be held here at Sasser Building in the boardroom. Persons interested in speaking at meetings of the board must register with the Office of the Board of Education two and a half hours prior uh, to the meeting by calling 301-952-6115. That concludes my chair's remarks, and I will now yield the floor to Dr. the future doctor, the wife of Dr. Valentine, <laughs> to Curtis Valentine, uh, chair of the Policy, Legal, and Legislative Committee uh, for a committee report. Mr. Valentine. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you, everyone, uh, for coming out tonight every uh, year. Uh, Chair, women, and chairmen of the committees of our board present uh, on the work that we do as committee, as committees. Uh, a lot of the work that you see before you at our board meetings began um, as committee topics, committee ideas that are deliberated on and brought here uh, for further deliberation and passage. And so, uh, what I'll be doing is speaking briefly about the policy, legal, and legislative committee of this of this uh, body. Um, I am the chair. Uh, my vice chair is uh, Lupe Quinteros Grady. Uh, did I say Quinteros right? Did I roll the R right? Okay. Uh, Carolyn Boston, uh, Raila Ahmed, uh, K. Alexander Wallace, and Dr. Donna Wiseman. Uh, the charge of the uh, Policy, Legal, and Legislative Committee uh, is um, in ensuring that the board policy and legislation are focused on key areas of both impact and responsibility that enhance parent and community engagement and significantly improve student academic outcomes and improve overall uh, governance. Specifically, our committee develops a strategy for reviewing policy bylaws and share that strategy with the board and the administration. Um, we re review board policies and bylaws and make re recommendations to the board. Uh, we oversee the development of new policy as well as amend existing policy. Uh, we align policy development with our 2016 to 2020 strategic plan um, oversee development of annual legislative agenda, which we take to Annapolis every legislative session to use as a benchmark um, against legislation that is introduced um, each legislative session here in Maryland. We review and provide recommendations on the student code of conduct uh, and present those findings to the board and the CEO. Uh, we monitor the implementation of policies and we receive updates from our general counsel. What we also do every year is adopt uh, general priorities of the board, um, of our committee, excuse me, uh, which we uh, try to um, really emphasize our work. Uh, at the same time, we do um, receive uh, policy recommendations from other committees um, and from individual board members that we deliberate on every year. Um, as a committee, um, we have uh, elected to um, concentrate on four areas, one being student equity, um, and that is around um, both students and teachers in our system. We have an equity tax force in which one of our committee members, uh, Mr. K. Alexander Wallace, is the, is the co-chair, so he brings that information to us and we will use that as we review policies of the school board. 
Uh, we were also going to be um, reviewing the, uh, the current grading policy, which was adopted uh, a year or so ago as administrative procedure, um, not adopted, but introduced as administrative procedure by the, by the CEO, um, but we'll also be reviewing that and its implementation um, and its impact on student achievement. Uh, for the first time, we're going to be concentrating on county-based legislation. Uh, and so this is something that uh, we understand the relationship between the county council and this body. I am the county council appointee to the school board. But we also know the impact and the importance of the county council um, as a funding body uh, for this uh, for the school board, and so uh, we wanted to uh, make it a priority to begin reviewing um, county council policy in ways that we can uh, work with them on areas um, uh, like transportation, uh, like construction around sidewalks near our schools, uh, like funding of parks and libraries, uh, and where uh, zoning um, the uh, the county council zones certain businesses. And so these are things that we're going to be looking at as a uh, as a committee. Uh, also, we will be, um, as we always do, be very active in monitoring legislation that comes out of Annapolis every year. Uh, this legislative session, there are a couple areas where we'll be concentrating our work, one around supporting legislation that creates a pipeline for quality teachers in our system that ensures that they can do so um, at a minimal cost to them. So there's some models around the country, um, particularly that really emphasize um, teachers who want to go into the profession but can't afford it and that this, this state would support them with uh, cost reimbursement or scholarship. Also, um, we will be um, in part leading the way in, in cre creating a report on the recent board configuration here that will be uh, submitted to the, legisl the um, state legislature around the work of this board and its current configuration. At the same time, we will continue to, read, um, to receive feedback from advisory boards to uh, our policy committee, one being the uh, minority-based enterprises and locally-based enterprises uh, committee. Um, I am the board representative, um, although the, uh, I'm the only board representative. The, the remaining members are members of the public, um, and they meet regularly, and they will be bringing recommendations to us uh, as, a, as a policy committee as they see fit. Uh, similarly, the Disabilities Issues Advisory Board, also known as DAB, uh, will be coming to our to our committee soon as well to uh, make recommendations on on how we as a system can be more supportive of students disability uh, we had a very active year I won't get too deep into what we've done but I'll just say that our meetings are public um, you all are all invited to attend those meetings um, uh, our minutes for those meetings are also public and so we definitely um, invite the public to come um, to listen in our, our, our deliberations, but also to testify before our committees on how you think we can improve our school system through our policy, legislative, and legal uh, committee. Uh, and so uh, I thank you all and look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. That concludes the, the committee report. We'll move on to Dr. Maxwell. I'll yield the floor to uh, for the CEO's report. Mr. Chair. Um, do, we, do we typically pose questions during committee reports? I know sometimes we do, sometimes we, we don't. We have not. That's not our practice. It's kind of like the same as the chair's report where the committee just does a written presentation. But if there are administrative issues, we do that. We do take care of those in the back room. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eubanks, members of the board. Good evening. Uh, I want to second... Uh, Dr. Eubanks uh, comments on the $25 million three-year grant from the U.S. Department of Education, uh, the investment in our teachers and principal effectiveness at some high-need schools in our district will allow us to better recruit, assign, develop, support, and retain our best educators and administrators. It's exactly the type of investment that can move the lever on student achievement at schools most in need of quality instruction and leadership. And I want to uh, take another opportunity to thank my colleagues for their hard work in securing the grant. The work will not only help the students of today, but those who will follow. Speaking of quality leadership, I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge this final week of National Principals Month. Our school leaders work incredibly hard all year long on behalf of students and families, <clears throat> and October is our chance to let them know how much we appreciate their efforts. We have until October 31st to thank a principal, but I'm sure they won't mind if you're a couple days late. Next month, I hope to see you at our second annual Family Institute Conference on Saturday, November 18th at Northwestern High School. There will be interactive sessions to help families become partners in education and an inspiring keynote address by educator and author Ron Clark. 
Also, I'd like to offer congratulations to our outstanding student athletes at Dr. Henry A. Wise and Charles H. Flowers High Schools. Both schools' football teams are undefeated this season. Wise is home to the two-time defending state championships, <laughs> champions, and Flowers is on the rise. You can see more of Prince George's County football on our new series, PG-13, at www.pgcps.org slash PG-13. This concludes my remarks. Thank you, Dr. Maxwell. Uh, we will now move on to public comment uh, for agenda and non-agenda items. We have four registered speakers this evening. Uh, I will remind our registered speakers that uh, in a public comment forum, the Board of Education will listen to your comments but will not uh, address your comments. Uh, registered speakers have three minutes to make your presentation. Please, at the sound of the buzzer, complete your final uh, sentences. Uh, and uh, please do not relinquish any part of your speaking time to another individual. Uh, adherence to these uh, simple procedures will help us uh, with this process. And we will begin first with uh, Mike Turborg, teacher for Mary Harris Mother Jones Elementary School. Good evening. Could you please push that button, make sure it's not is lit up? And it is lit up. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. It's a pleasure to stand before you once again. Uh, previously, I've been at Mount Rainier, Mount Rainier Elementary Schools and Port Towns Elementary Schools. This year, I happened to switch school, switch to Mary Harris Mother Jones. All three of them are, are indeed our Title I schools, and in that particular list of cohorts, so we thank you for that grant and the hard work that you've done on it. We also, as a library media specialist, I thank you for the honor of hosting that event earlier tonight, earlier, on our 3D scholarship awards. Tonight I come before you to talk about our innovative programs. As a library media specialist, the co we have a core role in that. I switched this year because I could no longer maintain the innovative programs with the, with the time that I had at my schools. It was a heartbreaking decision to switch to a new school this year. My students that have been a member that I've worked with over the last four and a half years, where I started a pre-K to a pre-K technology program, where I had my students filming. It was the first in the country, filming and recording their own videos for dissemination, their own reports, had to come to an end. My second year, my second to sixth grade computer club that I started, that surprised the heck out of our technology program at. Um, our new high school there had to come to an end because I could no longer support it on my own. Being a library media specialist at two schools is very challenging. It takes an inordinate amount of work. I had two programs to plan. It's, it hinders our students. This past year, when I made my decision for customer service reasons to switch, I had one student come up to me and it broke her heart. She asked why I was leaving. I had to tell her it was adult problems and adult issues. That wasn't fair. Third grade, yeah. break her heart to have her leave. Breaks her heart so that they cannot get the materials. And I've spoken before to you about the materials in the program. Up till now, I've never spoken about the staffing ratios because I thought I could handle it. But I can't, I couldn't. I had to switch for my own sanity and my own well-being. So now Port Towns is without a librarian. They're fortunate to have somebody there to check out books, but they miss the other key roles that we're able to provide. Mount Rainier has a librarian, but her strength is not in the technology. So those programs, those innovative programs that we've started there, I'm hoping to continue at Mary Harris Mother Jones where I have a population of 900. It's down from the 1,400 students I've served previously. I thank you for your time. I thank you for taking the support. I've submitted my comments on record. Um, I look, urge you to look forward to these fundings and staffing over the, over the course of this year. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your comments, Mr. Turborg, and thank you so much for your service. Our next speaker is Penny Mendoza. Good evening. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak before you. I saw many of you yesterday at the County Council Town Hall meeting. Um, just uh, wrote it down this time, hopefully it won't be so long. I am the parent of a third grade talented and gifted um, student at Highland Park Elementary School. And I'm here because I feel that the integrity of the TAG program is being compromised. I pulled my son out of a wonderful program at the Cesar Chavez Dual Language Spanish Immersion Program um, once he tested for the TAG program. Um, it wasn't an easy decision, but I was told that he would be amongst his intellectual peers, which really, really stuck with me, um, with my husband and I. So we, um, um, instead of him just being pulled out an hour, an hour, hour and a half a, a week, he would be in TAG all day with a um, class full of TAG kids. But I'm told that because of the number of students that we have at our school, we only qualify for, for the need of two third grade teachers. But the regular third grade class is, I guess would have to have like 36, 37 kids. So what the principal there chose to do was they have about 30 kids in the regular third grade class and then they put other children, non-TAG identified kids in the TAG identified class. Um, I, I would like for it to be considered that the talented and gifted children are counted separately. I don't see how they could just be counted as everyone else the way he, my son would be counted either at our neighborhood school or at any other specialty school. Um, and I just, I feel that the program is being watered down. Um, when we test the kids in this tag class, is that really accurate numbers? Or also, I mean, some of us have talked about pulling our children out, so you will now have possibly a tag class with less tag kids in them than tag kids. Um, and I just wanna say I, I feel cheated. That's not what I signed up for. That's not why I pulled my child out of a specialty program that I can't get him back in. Um, not saying that's what we would do, but I don't have that option. Um, so just please consider that, um, I don't know how much of a program, the talented and gifted program is, if, if there's no special recognition for it. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for your comments, Ms. Mendoza. Our next speaker is Teresa Dudley, president of Prince George's County Educators Association. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Maxwell, Board of Education and staff. Um, I just am thankful to um, the chair for reminding everybody about the Kerwin Commission meeting tomorrow at Largo High School at 6.30. It's very important for us in Prince George's County with our high concentrations of poverty that we make sure that equitable funding is really reflected in the Kerwin Commission report. So I ask all PGCA unit members and the county at large, um, parents, everyone to please come out. It's very important that they know that we are concerned about this. On the tail end of that, I'd also like to add that on March 19th, um, in 2018, there will be a march in Annapolis for funding for the Kerwin Commission report when it does come out. So I'm just kind of giving you all a heads up on that, okay? <clears throat> this year, we have done great things um, working together, especially establishing the restorative practices pilot, which will assist in elevating the culture and climate and assist in shutting down the school to prison pipeline. We have added additional peer assistance and review consulting teachers and additional mentor teachers. We have engaged in interest-based bargaining, also known as win-win bargaining, to redraft and many of the archaic parts of our negotiated agreement, such as evaluations, types of leave, and most importantly, well-deserved compensation enhancements for our PGCEA members. As we look to the 2018-2019 budget, PGCEA would like to address a few issues. I know that all the departments are turning in their um, reports to Dr. Maxwell now. Number one, an expansion of the restorative practices pilot program. Um, a 
a formal implementation of community schools pilot program, which would be based on best practices nationally, fully funding the tentative agreement and funds to restore steps for members who are off step. We also need to make sure that we are including preparations for the Every Student Succeeds Act implementation and funding to reduce the, some of the overcrowding in our schools inside the Beltway. The gentleman just spoke about Port Towns Elementary School had 1,400 students. That school was not built for 1,400 students. That school was built for, I believe, eight or 900 students. So we need to address those issues. We also need to look at addressing the needs of the special educators in Prince George's County who are going through some really troubling times by not having enough planning time because there's not subs to give them the contractual days off that they need. We also need to make sure that co-teachers are there when they're supposed to be there. And those are issues we need to really look at. So with all, having said all that, I just want to say one last thing. And that is good news. That PGCEA is hosting the NEA, National Educators Association Black Issues Conference at the Gaylord Hotel, April the 26th through the 29th. The annual conference is um, <clears throat> held every year by the NEA Black Caucus to address the needs of African American students and educators. We are proud to be hosting this event and it will be a great event for all of us to learn more about how we can um, address the needs of our African American students. If you are interested, please see me and we'll get you information on registration. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dudley. You know, I could not cut you off when you're talking about the NEA Black Issues Conference. You got me on that one. All right, our next speaker is Derek Simmons. Hello, my name is Derek Simmons. I'm I'd like to thank you for giving me the time to, to speak. Um, I have a proposal um, that's concerned me. Every time I drive to work every morning, I, I have to drive by, um, by buildings, Prince George's County public school buildings, with names that offend me. And so I have a proposal to remove from PG County uh, public school buildings and places of honor the symbol, um, the symbol of the names of all individuals that have a history of shown to be proven to be negative racist leaders, so-called heroes and, and or a part of the Confederacy during its existence at the time of the American Civil War and the antebellum period in the US. Also included would be any, um, being that Maryland was a border state, uh, we included any Southern sympathizers and those that were involved in the conspiracy and death of Abraham Lincoln. These are people that our children should not look up to and honor. Our children should not be educated under buildings with the names of such negative individuals. It's time that we correct the lies, mistakes, and the hatred that existed in, the, in past generations and live in a more positive, honest, and people-loving society. For example, um, examples of names would be one that I see all the time is John Wilkes Booth. Um, conspir uh, assassin, assassin of Abraham Lincoln, uh, Mary Surratt, and any of the derivative of her, of her last name. We have a school named Surrattsville High School. Every time I see that, it reminds me that she's the first woman that was executed because she was found guilty of co conspiring to assassinate Abraham Lincoln because she was a Southern sympathizer. Um, Samuel Mudd, um, also a conspirator that, uh, that assisted John Wilkes Booth. Um, and then we know about Roger B. Taney, the Supreme Court Justice. These are examples, but there we may have um, others on buildings and, and places of honor within the school system um, that we need to look at and get rid of. Um, it's very important. Our children shouldn't be um, honoring such people, and it's time that we take care of this immediately. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. 
uh, for those remarks. Uh, and to all of our speakers, we thank you uh, for sharing your insights with us. Uh, we take them uh, extremely seriously as we try to do what we can do to move this great system forward. Uh, so that concludes our uh, public speaking for this evening, and we move on to the budget, to the, I'm sorry, to the consent agenda. And I will yield the floor to Dr. Maxwell for an introduction of items 4.1 through 4.5 under the consent agenda. Thank you, Dr. Eubanks. Members of the board, items 4.1 to 4.5 require board approval of proclamations commemorating the following during the month of November. School Psychology Awareness Week, National Hunger and Homeless Week, Native American Heritage Month, Maryland Emancipation Day, and American Education Week. Thank you, Dr. Maxwell. Colleagues, I will entertain a motion to approve items 4.1 through 4.5 under the consent agenda. It has been moved and seconded to approve these items. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, say no. Thank you, colleagues. That motion carries. I now yield the floor to Dr. Maxwell for an introduction to items 5.1 through 5.3 under the budget consent agenda. Thank you, Dr. Eubanks. Members of the board, items 5.1 to 5.3 require board approval of the November 2017 expenditure requirements. Fiscal year 18 approval operating budget increase of, of a full-time employee 1.0 position and final acceptance and payment for the school air handling unit replacement at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. Thank you, colleagues. I will now entertain a motion to approve items 5.1 through 5.3 under the budget consent agenda. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Burrow. I just want to say uh, on uh, 5.3 Eleanor Roosevelt um, air issues, um, I went to Friendly High School and it was very hot. Um, I think half, one whole wing is not working and, uh, for Friendly Air. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Burroughs. Any others? Seeing none, I will put the vote before you. All those in favor of approving items 5.1 through 5.3, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, that motion carries. Um, we do not have any second readers. We move on to first reader, and I will yield the floor to Dr. Maxwell for an introduction of item 8.1 under new business, first reader. Thank you, Dr. Eubanks, members of the board. Item 8.1. Uh, is first reader for the request for renewal of CMIT South and the merger with the elementary school and requires no discussion. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, I may entertain a motion to approve item 8.1 under new business first reader. Second. May I have a second? It has been moved and seconded to approve item 8.1 under first reader. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. Thank you. That motion carries. Um, Colleagues, there are no follow-up items on tonight's agenda, so I will move on to item 10.0 and ask for a motion to approve actions taken in executive session on Tuesday, October 14, 2017. It's been properly moved and seconded that the Board of Education hereby approves actions taken in executive session on October 24, 2017 as follows. Legal matters, personnel appointments, labor negotiations, and student appeals. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's one aye. Would anyone else like to say aye about executive session this evening? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All those opposed? That motion carries with one abstention. I bet you I can get a vote on this. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are adjourned, and this might be a record. We're not sure yet, but certainly a modern record. So thank you very much.